Hey guys, what's going on? Kyle Krieger here. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about, you know, things that sort of are your pet peeves, things that are like do's and don'ts. And we're just going to talk about like Instagram internet etiquette in general. Basically, I got the idea for this video because I just at random put up a Q&A on my Instagram stories asking you guys, what is the most annoying thing to you about Instagram? And you guys had so many things that annoy you about Instagram and the internet in general. So I thought it would be funny to just sort of talk about those things. We're gonna put up a bunch of your answers on the screen and just sort of have a discussion about that. Secondly, I'm teaming up with Warby Parker for this video. I am gonna be wearing different frames throughout the video and you guys are gonna help me choose which ones to buy. Um, hopefully in the comments below, you can let me know out of the five glasses that I wear today, which ones you like the most. I think these are my favorite, but we'll see. Just pay attention to my glasses as we sort of dive in, okay? So let's start with our first answer to the question. Ryan said, reels. I think it's funny because I am a little bit grateful for Reels because it gives me like just a little bit of that TikTok energy, although it doesn't keep me up all night. Whereas TikTok, I had to delete from my phone because I was just constantly, on, like I would spend, like I would go to bed, get in bed at like 11 and I would be on TikTok until 3 a.m. Just like just scrolling and like laughing to myself and like crying and like having a good time. But it was so fun and Reels is sort of like the diet you know, one calorie, just not enough sort of vibe of TikTok. So it's like a nice dabble, but I agree. It'll just never be TikTok. Okay, so the next one is posting stories from overcrowded places and without a mask. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> the whole thing around people not wearing a mask is honestly the most frustrating thing the misinformation from the beginning about masks and the misinformation from the top of the government down has just, the fact that this is a political statement is beyond me. And when you are in a crowded place and you're posting on stories and you don't have your mask on, it sort of builds this social contagion where like someone would see it and be like, oh, this person's not wearing their mask, why am I? It is a very simple thing to do and it's a small inconvenience, but I get that it's annoying. And when you see other people not doing it, you're like, well, why am I doing this if no one else is doing it? So it is important to always wear your mask because it does save lives. Post stories in an overcrowded place, you should be wearing a mask. Sharing screenshots of private heated combos encouraging others to attack without context. This one feels very current, even though this was from December. <laughs> but there is this unspoken trust that I feel like that people have through text message and through DM that when that trust is broken and those screenshots are um, put to public view, out of context, I do feel like it is, I just feel like it's really messy and it can build this attack of someone that is just feels very wrong and puts that person in a very vulnerable position and it just does not feel good. But I would agree that this just does not, is not good digital practice. It especially feels hurtful if someone with a lot of followers posts screenshots of a heated conversation of someone with less followers because it just feels like you're punching down and that just, it just doesn't sit right with me. Okay, so we have worn these glasses for a few questions. So just take note, we're gonna switch glasses. We're gonna move on to, ooh, these black ones. Um, these are also a matte finish. And I feel like this is a perfect time to switch glasses and also take a little commercial break to talk about Warby Parker. Okay guys, so Warby Parker is committed to exceptional eye care, um, whether it be in-store or online. They have a range of um, services, whether it be contact lenses, glasses, sunglasses, prescription lenses, eye exams. So I've been wearing Warby Parker, I guess now since Tyler Oakley mailed me um, um, a pair of glasses from his collaboration with them a few years ago, and I love them so much, right? So I am happy to work with them today and talk about them and why I love them. First of all, the styles I feel like are perfect for me, and I really appreciate the range of styles that they have. Really inexpensive and actually very durable. So I think they all start around $95, with the prescription. They have a new program where you get to try on 
um, five, three to five pairs of glasses that you pick online after taking a quiz. They'll sort of give you a bunch of options that may be right for you. Then they mail you a box um, and it has three to five pairs of glasses that you chose. Um, these glasses here um, come in a box like this. You have five days to go over the glasses, take pictures of them, send them to your friends, get a really good idea about you know what which ones you like, what, what do your friends like, what don't you like, and then you send them back, all paid for. The shipping is completely free to you and they add a return label so you can send it back and you can um, tell them which glasses you like, um, and if you don't like any of them, you do not have to buy some. You can send them back, no charge. So you can go to the description box and you can check out um, the link there. I'm also gonna put it right here on the screen. Warbyparker.com slash Kyle Krieger. And you can enroll in Warby's in Warby Parker's free try on program. Um, if you choose the link here, it's great because you get to support me and my channel. And then also you can try on these classes for free. Don't forget, no obligation to buy just trying them out, right? And also make sure to comment and let me know which pair you like. And we're gonna jump into when people put in the caption of their pick, no caption necessary. Woo, well that one gets me too and I don't know why it's so silly. Like who cares what other people caption? But let me tell you, if you put no caption necessary or do you know what also annoys me is when people put caption this and, and like ask their followers to like make up a caption, that drives me insane. Best caption in the comments wins a like from me or something, I'm like, a like? What? <laughs> you want me to write you a caption that I get a like? Okay, so Will O'Connor has a lot to say here. Um, <laughs> good for Will. He kind of touches on Facetune, that it's gotta go, memes with typos. Whew, that also stresses me out because especially if it's like a really funny meme and then the meme just like is using like your or your, your and your wrong or like there and there or like it just has like a really obvious typo. Even if I love it so much, I'm not gonna share it because spell check is right there. <laughs> Google is right there. Like just before you put something up, just make sure it's spelled correctly. Angus. You're snoring, we're filming. So that leads us into another um, answer where Rick says, overuse of the eye clarity tool, but also just very blatant sloppy retouching in general. Like, look, I totally get it. We all retouch our photos. I will agree that retouching sort of something that should be done in a very delicate way. I totally believe in the idea that we wanna put out the best version of ourselves and it's totally fine and normal to want to correct imperfections or flaws that maybe you see. It's also totally normal to do nothing like that. And if you wanna put out an extremely natural photo of yourself, all for it, do that too. I'm not here to criticize any of that because I have done both of those things. Instagram is not reality, right? Instagram is a fantastical place where everyone is putting up a highlight reel of their life that is literally the best version of themselves. It does reinforce this idea that we are trying to be something that we're not. But in, you know, in this on the other side of the coin is like that's what Instagram is. It's not real life. However, I will say in many ways, Instagram can be very useful for real life things. For example, momentum on electing a political candidate or activism and working against um, racial inequity, um, those sort of things like that, Instagram is great for. So let's switch glasses. We've had these on and let's see, I'm gonna try on these ones. Um, oh, I love these. These are actually really nice. Oh, they're so light. When people don't let other people enjoy things, let people be excited for stuff. Oh, that is so that is so important and I totally know what you mean. When it comes down to it, we are all managing the most intense year ever. An election year, compounding pandemics between racial inequity and the COVID-19 crisis. So like everybody is trying their best, I think, and I want to allow people, I do think it's important that we allow people just to enjoy things and just like, even if it's something that we think is silly, like just gas them up. It's so easy to be kind and it's so easy to allow people to like things. Angus, 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 you're snoring. I'm trying to film. Okay, so the next one is cropped pictures on Instagram that don't look nice. 
So I don't necessarily know like what sort of crop he's talking about. However, I will say any sort of crop, you know, is important. My rule of thumb is like, I don't crop at, at joints. I don't crop at the wrist. I, wrist. I try to like give a little bit of a mid arm. I don't crop at elbows or knees. I don't crop at the ankles. Like I try to, be really mindful of the way that I crop my photo because it just, when you're dealing with an app that people like immediately are looking, that like you get one second for them to look and decide whether or not they like it, right? And like those small aesthetic things, they actually impact the viewer right away. Little other things like this too are like crooked horizon lines and making sure that your photos are graphic. Like those little details, um, including cropping, really impact the photo. And you make those small adjustments, it makes a huge difference on how someone reacts to the photo in the second that they see it. Angus! Angus is deaf, so he can't hear when he's snoring when I'm filming. Angus! Okay, so the next one comes from Max. He said, COVID parties. We've sort of touched on this already, and yes, I agree. Partying during the pandemic is, and then posting about it, like partying during a pandemic is one thing. Like that, obviously, I'm totally against. Obviously, we want to stop the spread of the virus, and even though the death rate is only 1%, when you count 330 million people in the United States, that death toll is so large. Then posting about it, with like the social contagion of like, oh, I see my other friends partying and I'm here stuck at home quarantining, trying to be good. Why am I doing this if everybody else is out? Like that just is not good practice on the internet. So the next submission is the lack of crediting when people blatantly copy someone's work. <sighs> yes, I know this very well. Um, and I have mixed feelings about it. So if you're posting another photographer's work that they took of you, you absolutely should tag them, right? 100%, especially if you have a larger following, especially if um, you could set this person up for success. You should always be tagging them. Tag everyone that had a say or a part in the way that you look. What's the good of having a following if you can't share it with other people? I also come from the belief that like everything has sort of been done before and um, we're just sort of reinventing old ideas into our interpretation of what they are. I could be wrong, that's just my opinion. If you take an idea and you're inspired by it and you change it 20 to 30%, whatever that is, um, then you've made it your own, right? However, I do think it's important and I do think it's nice to know, um, you know where the work was inspired from because as a viewer like me, I would love to see your work, I like it, but then if you're inspired by this person, maybe I wanna see that work too and helps us all learn better and have better references and introduces us to new artists. And I think that's very cool. So yes, crediting is super, super important. Number four. Oh, I like these. These are tortoise and they have more of a round shape this time. This next one is I got the most, the most, like hundreds, I feel like, of people saying the same thing that my friend Joel said. When people post new posts on stories, you guys hate this. <laughs> you guys absolutely hate this. When someone posts an image on their feed, but then they link it to their story and then they cover it with a gif that says new post. We got it. We saw it the first time. We don't need to see it again. I hate when you do this. Why do you do this? This is so frustrating. Little, so many people. So <laughs> if you are seeing this and I have done this before too, just know that your followers are annoyed. In the defense of people that do this, I do think that they do it to, you know, to kind of combat the algorithm because they are assuming the new Instagram al algorithm is not working in their favor and they just want to get more eyes on their image or their work or their art or whatever it is. My esthetician said, certain people annoy the sh out of me, nothing in particular, just them in general. <laughs> Which, look, we are on an app that has hundreds of millions of people, right? It is a social mecca center of so many people. We are not gonna like everyone. Not everyone is gonna like us. So it is totally normal to be annoyed by people. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put my sunglasses on for this one because this one's a little shady. <laughs> but let's talk about um, this next person. So these are number five. Okay, so Sean said, constant pictures of kids. <laughs> Which really makes you laugh because I also feel like people know that I just don't like kids that much and I love my life without kids and just dogs. However, I know that my sister wants to have a kid, so eventually I will be a gunkle, which is probably the perfect amount of kid for me because I can travel there, hang out with her and the kid, and then bounce, right? 
um, no like full commitment. Straight personal trainers, queer baiting for likes and follows. I follow straight trainers. I feel like a lot of them are really well intentioned and they really just wanna help people get fit and feel good about their bodies and train them digitally to show them that they can get through this pandemic and still be exercising. And then there's another group of straight trainers that sort of gay bait and sort of post images um, that are trying to get likes and attention from specifically gay followers because they know gay men are like a really good following to have. So I have substituted, I have removed those people from my feed, unfollowed them, and sort of added um, people that make me feel good about my diet or um, give me kind of new exercises to try out, interesting ways to exercise, then maybe just like in the new year, 2021, just toss them. Just substitute them with something that makes you feel good. Okay, so I'm gonna take off the shady glasses. Brandon said, when people I follow for years start posting anti-vax content, grateful for you. Thank you, I'm grateful for you too. Or at least I wanna be very pro-vaccine on my channel and on my social media because I feel like it is extremely important to have a COVID vaccine to save thousands and millions of lives, right? So. This vaccine is extremely important and I really hope that we get the rollout under control and we get as many people vaccinated as possible. I 100% will be taking the vaccine and I hope that you guys will also consider taking the vaccine. Okay, great. Oh wow, it's brightening up in here. I just, I'm gonna put on these ones again because I think these are my favorite. But um, anyway, so I just wanna remind you again to check out this um, Try at Home um, program from Warby Parker. I'm gonna put the link in the description box. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys had a good laugh and we talked about our pet peeves about social media and Instagram. Um, please make sure you comment below. Let me know which glasses you like the best um, uh, because I feel like I like, like all of them. So it'll be nice to see which ones you guys think look best. And yeah, follow me on social media if you wanna check out my Instagram. It's at Kyle Krieger. I'm also on Twitter, at Kyle Krieger. And yeah, I would love to see you guys on there. Come say hi. And I appreciate you watching this video. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.